What is going on miners and welcome back to the Hobbyist Miner channel. Well, I've been keeping my eye on local hardware and what I can go ahead and pick up for a discounted price and bargain price because right now in the bear market is a great opportunity to buy if you have faith that things will return to a bull market in the near future. Near future being hopefully within a year, hopefully not too much more, but who knows? Nobody really knows. Anyways, I wanted to show you guys that I have gone ahead and picked up two Bitmain Antminer L3++. So let me go ahead and show you what I got. Today's video is sponsored by the team over at NiceHash.com. NiceHash is the world's leading hash power marketplace and home to millions of GPU and ASIC miners selling their hash power instead of mining directly. Miners have been struggling to overcome high operating costs like their monthly electric bills and low mining profits. The team at NiceHash has been working on a new way for miners to help boost profitability with a brand new twist. NiceHash is excited to announce the launch of a brand new solo mining concept called Catch the Block. Here's how it works. Step one, create an account at NiceHash.com. Step two, visit the solo mining dashboard. Step three, choose the package of choice and finally step four purchase that package and bam you're done let the solo mining begin thanks again to the team over at nice hash for sponsoring today's video okay guys so here we have it if you guys saw the short that i dropped uh just the other day this is the one and we have one here and then we have a second one right here. Now let's take a look at this one first. So this one we got locally off of Facebook Marketplace. Um, we did get it from a guy within 10 to 20 miles or so. Uh, and we did pick this one up for $300 cash. Now it did come with the miner as well as the power supply. We'll look at that in just a minute. But you could definitely see we paid a little extra for some of the grime and dirt but no concerns, we'll go ahead and definitely clean this out. You can see up here, this is the Antminer L3++, the sub model, this is the 580 model. There's a 580, and then I believe it's a, a 596, uh, but our, our long-term goal is to get HiveOS on these with the HiveOS firmware to go ahead and get better efficiency out of them. Uh, so that's my goal with these units. Now, if I'm this far into the video, what are we, two minutes in? I apologize, I haven't even talked about the fact of what these will mine for me and what these will do for me. So these are a few years old, but, and I, let me, let me step back. These are a few years old and I understand. And I'm interested in these because of the fact that I'd like to go ahead and get more Dogecoin and Litecoin in my bags. It's a goal that I have. I wanna get them to a certain point. So I can't financially afford something like uh, an L7, which is amazing with the amount of um, Dogecoin and Litecoin that it mines per day. Very profitable. I've seen several crypto miners in this scene that have them. But what I can afford is $300 cash for something like the L3++ here locally. Granted, it's not going to do as well. I mean, as we said, it's only doing 580-ish when it comes down to our hash rate there. But it still will allow me to pull in more Dogecoin and Litecoin than what my little gold shell mini ASIC miners would do. So now that you know what we're going to be mining with it uh, and our game plan with HiveOS down the road, let's go ahead and show you guys kind of what we have here. We'll get them cleaned up and, and we'll get some stuff done today. So here's the unit here. Um, it does have quite a few, as you can see, with our strings for power here that we're going to need. So two, four, six, eight. So it actually needs eight six pin and it actually has one, two, three, four different hash boards in here. Now it has these massive um, fans on them and these fans are actually 6,000 RPM fans and they are loud as anything. Well, we have a plan for that. So I've gone ahead and based off of uh, taking a look at some videos from Rabid Mining, so huge shout out to Rabid Mining, he went ahead and replaced his L3++ with these Noctua fans and these are the NF F12s and they have the four pins on them as you guys can see here that'll plug directly into the board itself which makes it nice and easy they'll even bury these on these older ones they're literally just sitting up top here like freely available um, so these will do well they do now these do 3000 cfm versus these do 6000 cfm so Based off my research, it will be sufficient. It will get us by. It will do the trick, which will be nice. One, they'll be significantly quieter. 
and they're going to pull less power, which will be good as long as they continue cooling the unit. Now, what it came with is this one actually has this Bitmain power supply. Um, this is the APW3++ power supply. It's a 1600 watt power supply. Now, the 580s stock do, uh, I think it's something like 940 watts. So I have some thoughts on this. I think once we replace these with the Noctua fans, that the power supplies are still going to be super loud and screaming. So I'm going to put it out there. You guys can tell me, can I replace this power supply with like an HP server power supply that does like 1200 watts with a breakout board and some um, sufficient uh, PCI cables? And is that enough or do I need to go this route? Now, the second unit is this unit here. Uh, this unit is actually my cousin's unit. You guys know that I host one of his rigs. He was interested in getting one of these when he heard I was going down the route. So we actually nabbed this one off of eBay. Uh, and we went back and forth with a seller, uh, with another buyer actually, and a seller. And we ended up buying this one off eBay with this power supply for $375 with shipping. So $75 more for this unit than this unit locally. Locally is always better pricing. Now, the benefit is these actually have brand new fans on them. Uh, brand new ones, which we're gonna pull off here. I'm probably gonna hold them for like my GPU rigs or whatever, we'll have to see. But they did go ahead and install these brand new fans on here. So we're gonna test out. I wanna see from a, a decibel level how loud these are with the stock fans and then how loud these are with these aftermarket ones. And then we'll go ahead and move to the Noctua fans. Um, this one did come with different style power supply. All of these look pretty rough condition. Uh, this is the Illisilicon uh, G5118. So this is a 1400 watt. So we have 1400 watt, we have 1600 watt, and then we are still kicking around the idea of the 1200 watt. So what's next? My next step is I'm gonna take these outside and get these blown off because they are in rough shape. At least this one is. This one isn't terrible, but uh, I'm gonna do my best to get these cleaned up uh, in better condition. Uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and get them plugged in and we're gonna do some testing on exactly how loud they are, exactly how they stand before we do anything with upgrading the fans. All right, so our eBay unit, which is down here, was in so much better condition uh, once I opened it up, cleaned it out. It didn't even need that much work, actually. But our local unit, oh man, guys. I mean, glad I'm replacing the fans on this unit. But just the inside of this, like I couldn't even get this hashboard out, actually. It was like stuck in there with like grime and dirt, and I didn't want to push too hard on it. The inside is just in rough shape. The boards are fine, they look good. They just need like a good wipe down and stuff like that. But yeah, this one definitely was kept in like someone's garage or something like that and just run all the time, which is what they're supposed to be, but wasn't kept up with and cleaned in any way. Uh, and it definitely needs some love. Uh, so that one, I actually took everything apart, pulled it all out and I'm gonna wipe it down and clean it off. Um, it really could use uh, one of those cleaners that is completely uh, I can't even think of the name of them. Um, those uh, cleaners that you go ahead and drop them in. I know Panda did a video on those and the Mining King as well. But like uh, one of those baths that you drop it in because oh my gosh, some of these are 
definitely in rough shape. So anyways, I'm gonna get this all cleaned up and get this all put back together so we can go ahead and start to do our testing uh, with the fans. Okay, miners, I decided to do our little test here inside in my crypto mining basement because one, it's a little bit quieter, a little bit more controlled. Only downside is I need a longer C13 to C14 cable. It kind of has to go like through the door hinge there and it's not quite long enough to go into our crypto mining room where we have 30 amp 240 volt set up, but this will do for now. So we have our L3++ with the stock fans on it. We're going to be using the same power supply for both of our tests. This is the Bitmain uh, power supply versus this Illa Silicon one. This one is so freaking loud, it's ridiculous. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a baseline test here. I'm using, I use the same sound meter one. It's free little app, but it'll at least give us some good baselines. So let me go ahead and hit the reset button and we'll give it a few seconds and we'll go off of the average. Okay, we're gonna base everything off of 62, is baseline completely quiet the way it is now. So our next step is, let's go ahead and get our power cables plugged in. So these usually have a whole string of PCI cables off of these power supplies. You do need to do a six pin to the control board up here. This is kind of the brains of everything. These are just your hash boards here. Then you have your hash boards, and then there's one extra. So let me get these completed in three, two, and one. Okay, PCI cables are done, nothing too crazy, just a little hard to do one-handed. I'm not red panda mining here, guys, come on. So, last thing we have to do, there's no on-off switch, is we're gonna go ahead and plug in our power. So this one, we're gonna put down the camera the best we can. Sorry for taking you guys for a roller coaster ride. Let's get this plugged in. All right, cool. So we're plugged in. It's and we're gonna give it a second and it'll start to ramp up and stuff like that. So we're gonna let this run for 10 minutes and then we're gonna go ahead and do our readings here. The other thing we're gonna do is in this scenario is within HiveOS. So HiveOS has this um, HiveOS ASIC hub that you guys can see. And you don't need to be on HiveOS firmware or anything like that. You can actually come in and do add device and then you can put the IP address in and it'll go ahead and if it integrates with HiveOS, it will go ahead and actually add it. So over here in my farm for my shed where these will be, I actually have both of them listed. The L3++ Dirty and the L3++ eBay. That's how I have them listed. But that's gonna show us our fan speeds. So we'll be able to see the fan speeds as to what they're running at. And then we'll also be able to go ahead and show you guys the uh, DB levels as to what they put off. Our goal is to have the lowest DB levels possible because we don't wanna put it in my crypto mining shed and it be screaming. So that's why we're most likely gonna go with the Noctua's at the very end. So I'll see you back here in 10 minutes. Okay guys, we are up and running right now. It's starting to get a little warm in here. You can see on the back side, I put this, you can feel the hot air right there. It's about 85 right now. It's definitely starting to get that up there. I bet you it hits 90 here sometime soon. Um, if we come over to the computer, you can see it actually, look, it listed in here, nothing special. I didn't do any special firmware or anything. But you can see Bitmain Antminer L3++, that's the dirty one. You can see it's mining at 580 mega hash. Uh, that is uh, with the script algorithm for Dogecoin and Litecoin. You can see our three hash boards in here and their temperatures. And then you can also see our RPMs here. So we're gonna go ahead, uh, you can see we're at 68, 70, 72, 65. You know, we're gonna keep that in mind uh, before we go to the next one. I'll record that, take a screenshot of it and we're just over 3,100 RPMs. So all the good things to keep in mind as we kind of compare some of these. So then if we come over, let's go ahead and reset. Now 62 was our baseline, right? Let's reset it and we'll give it five seconds. All right, so 75 there. So we've gone up uh, 13, 13 total dB just with this unit here. So my next step, look at that. See, we got up to 90 back here. Whew, get warm in here, guys. <laughs> just a enclosed room. So I'm gonna power this one down and then we're gonna power up that one. And we're gonna do the same comparisons. All right, time for test number two. We have, this is our eBay one with these aftermarket brand new fans that are on here. I could definitely tell like sound wise, they're a little, the whine noise is a little bit louder on these. Um, over almost 100 degrees back here, the airflow definitely feels like it's more airflow on these. Uh, if we take a look over on the computer here, 
Here's our eBay one, uh, 571 mega hash. And look at these, these are almost a thousand RPMs faster right now. Uh, now, if we compare temps, I have the temps over here on the old one. The old one had 69 here, 72, 73, and 66. So this one definitely is cooling significantly better for our hash boards, but our RPMs are also up over a thousand RPMs more. So now let's go ahead over here and let's let this run here for five seconds. All right, so that was 75. So it was the same actually, um, just, it's actually crazy to think about. So right about the same there when it comes to our DB rating. Overall though, we're still pretty high. You know, we were at 62, now we're up to 75. Um, this one, this test probably isn't a great test for that whine noise. If you guys know of an app uh, that would do it be good for the phone to test with like that could test that whine noise I don't even know what to call it. You guys are much more knowledgeable than me probably know what I'm talking about It's not the airflow sound. It's like the whine noise, but um, holy cow look at it 101 already in here Ugh, man crazy so These put out more airflow than the stock ones now the stock ones man You guys can see they got some age to them some wear and tear We also talked about how dirty those hash boards were we cleaned them out the best we could these are definitely cleaner. So it's crazy to think how cleaner hash boards and fans, how much more effective they are with cooling. Now, my next experiment is our Noctua fans. I can't do them yet, I found out. While waiting for these to go ahead and spin up, I did some research. In order to put the Noctua fans on, there's actually a safeguard on the L3 Pluses that if they don't see the RPMs at a certain speed, it will actually throw a fault and it'll stop it from mining. So what I need to do, I'm gonna do this in a future video, uh, let me know if you guys have done this, is you go ahead and put the HiveOS firmware on these, or there's like the BlissX firmware, I think. You then can put these fans on, and then there's a mode on the L3 Pluses called Immersion Mode, kind of like we're an immersion tank, and it tells it to ignore the uh, RPM kind of um, sensor so that it, it just makes these run at 100% and it doesn't go ahead and disable anything. So I do need to do that. I'm gonna do that in a future video because this video has already gone long, but hell, this was so much fun. 102, by the way, Whew. This was a lot of fun. I love getting into new hardware. I'd love to know from you guys. Have you guys picked up any bargain deals recently? I know a lot, it's a really bad time for crypto, trust me. I understand, but have you found any bargain deals? Leave a comment down below. Love to hear from you guys. We'll have this up in the next week or two. I'm swapping out to our Noctua fans. In the meantime, I am gonna get these in my crypto mining shed and mining some Dogecoin and Litecoin. If you guys enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up. Finally, don't forget to subscribe. Take care, guys. OctoMiner and nine other YouTubers are going to be giving away 10 prizes to 10 lucky winners. Each YouTuber has their own custom design that has been created and will be available for sale starting on November 1st. There will only be 50 shirts of each design available to buy. Each t-shirt purchase will be worth 50 entries without any limit on the number of shirts you can buy. You don't want to purchase a shirt? No problem, we got you covered. There are free ways to enter just by clicking the Gleam URL link down below in the description. We will also be giving away a portion of the proceeds to The Water Project Incorporated, a 501c3 nonprofit organization unlocking human potential by providing reliable water projects to communities in sub-Saharan Africa who suffer needlessly from a lack of access to clean water and proper sanitation. The Community CryptoTuber 500 giveaway will run from November 1st to November 29th. Those will be the available dates to enter. We will be having a live stream on YouTube to select the winners randomly using Gleam on Wednesday, November 30th. Good luck!